class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in today's video, we are going to explore the difference quotient again, except with a different type of function, a rational function this time. So just as a reminder, like in my last videos, we had talked about the difference quotient being connected to the idea of constant rate of change, slope, that we more normally write as y, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. But we can think about that difference quotient in terms of function notation written this way. And again, a reminder, in a later video, we'll explore a little bit more detail about what this h actually represents. So let's jump to our example here. We're going to find the difference quotient of this function, f of x equals 1 divided by x minus 2. What's complicated about this function is that it's a rational function. It's a fraction. But the same process that we used with linear functions in the previous video and quadratic functions also in the previous video, we would still apply here to this problem. So I'm going to start out again with the difference quotient. Writing my formula is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x, all divided by h. And again, a reminder, we've got f of x plus h that we need to use my f of x to find. So we're going to substitute in the quantity x plus h into the function everywhere I see an, an x. So when I do this, I end up with 1 divided by x plus h into that position minus 2. I'm going to put this in brackets again just to indicate that that fraction now replaces my original fraction because we are actually trying to evaluate that function for the quantity x plus h. Now I'm going to continue on with my difference quotient. I will subtract the original function f of x, which again is 1 divided by x minus 2. Okay. And just like before, I want to be very careful. How about we go ahead and put that in parentheses? It really doesn't impact things right this minute, but it is a nice habit to get into. And then of course, all of this is still divided by h. So let's see here. Um, I can now think about this as I've got two fractions in the numerator that's being subtracted. And of course, all of that is contained in this larger fraction that has the h in the, in the big denominator here. Now the challenge for us is we would like to simplify the numerator, these two fractions, down to being one fraction in the numerator alone. And so in order to do that, I really do need to have common denominators in both of these fractions that are up here. So we got to think, what would a common denominator be if I have this denominator, x plus h minus 2, and this denominator over here of x minus 2? Now, you might be thinking, well, in this first denominator, I'm only missing, or I only have an added h here that this one over here is missing. Maybe I could just add in an h. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. So what we have to do instead is you want to think about this denominator, x plus h minus 2, as being a whole unit together, a whole quantity, and x minus 2, another quantity. They share some common components, but they are clearly not the same denominator. So we're going to treat them as different denominators, and we're essentially going to say we want our greatest common denominator to be equal to whatever this denominator is, uh, x plus h minus 2 times this denominator over here, x minus 2. We're going to just take them as is and multiply them together. So we want our denominators to match this. Now, I don't want to multiply all of that out, distribute, and all those things. I just want to leave the denominator of choice in those parentheses. Okay. So we're going to go back to our problem and write in the new denominators and adjust those fractions um, as needed. So we have the difference quotient is equal to, when I come over here, the first fraction in the brackets, I already have one of the denominator pieces. So now I just need to take and say, okay, if I want x minus 2 to appear in this denominator, I need to multiply top and bottom, numerator and denominator, by the missing piece, which is x minus 2. So I have my original fraction, 1 divided by x plus h minus 2, and I'm going to multiply that whole fraction by the missing piece, x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. That's for the whole fraction. I'll come back later and simplify that. Then I'm going to subtract the second fraction, which I'm going to handle the same way when, as I try to maneuver and make that have the denominator that we would like it to have. Right now, it already contains the x minus 2 part. It's missing this part, x plus h minus 2. 
So I'm going to have my original fraction, 1 divided by x minus 2, and I'm going to now multiply that fraction by the piece that it's missing, this whole x plus h minus 2 divided by x plus h minus 2. So that technique will allow us to have now the same two denominators in each of those fractions, but I have new numerators for each of those fractions also. And don't forget, I still have this whole divide by h piece as well. So all of this divided by h. So now at this point, what we're gonna do is we're going to simplify that, kind of come up here and say the difference quotient now is equal to, let's go ahead and multiply these two fractions together. So we now have one times x minus two. So we have one times x minus two in the numerator, all divided by the denominator that I wanted, x plus h minus two times the x minus two part as well. That's my first fraction. Subtract off the second fraction again, one times that numerator th there as well, one times x plus h minus two divided by, again, the same denominator, x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2. And I know it seems like we shouldn't have it here, but we do. All of that is still, again, divided by h. So here at this point, what I would like to go ahead and do is simplify the numerator again. Difference quotient is equal to, I simply just have x minus 2 on top. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is simplify the numerators and write it as one giant fraction uh, by subtracting those new numerators at the very top. So 1 times x minus 2 again is x minus 2, but now I need to subtract off 1 times this whole set of parentheses, x plus h minus 2. I'm going to do that very carefully by just indicating that I'm going to put it in parentheses here. Subtract off the whole x plus h minus 2 part. And then of course that's all over still that denominator of x plus h minus two times x minus two. And of course all of that is still over the h as well. All right, we're cleaning up here. Difference quotient now is equal to. Let's go ahead and distribute our subtraction sign on three different terms. We end up with x minus two minus x, now minus h, and now plus the two. That new numerator is now being divided by the greatest common denominator that I wanted here, x plus h minus 2 times an x minus 2, and again, still all over the h. Continue on, the difference quotient now, we've got, I have a, an, a 1x essentially here, but later I have a subtract x, those subtract away. I have a minus 2 here, and later I have a plus 2, those also subtract away. Good news. What's left way up here is just a negative h, subtract h. Of course, all of that is divided by this numerator, or sorry, denominator that was here. So I have x plus h minus 2 times x minus 2. All of that, even though it's a fraction, is still in my numerator. And all of that is being divided by h. However, right here, what I'm going to do is remind ourselves that we actually never divide fractions. Instead, we multiply by the reciprocal of that denominator, okay? So I have the h in this denominator. The reciprocal of h is simply one over h. So I'm gonna take my numerator, which I've just written here, and I'm gonna multiply that by the reciprocal of that denominator, okay? One over h. The reason why I wanted to do that is hopefully to highlight the fact that now I have an h in my numerator over here, an h in my denominator way over here. Those two h's can actually divide out. I have this h here divides out with this h down here, which is good news for us. Now all I literally have is a negative one over here times the one. So I will write my final difference quotient. Negative one times one, negative one, all divided by what's left in my denominator, which are these two quantities. I have x plus h minus 2 times an x minus 2. And if you want, you can go ahead and distribute out that denominator, but there's really no need to do so. You can leave it just like this. And this is our final answer for the difference quotient of this particular rational function over here. Thank you.